You're listening to And the Plot Thickens, an Authors on the Air Radio Network podcast. Join your host, suspense and horror writer Jeff Crawford, as he explores the art of creating tension and mood with authors from a wide variety of genres. Find out more about Jeff and his books at authorjeffcrawford.com. And now, meet today's author guest. Hey up and welcome to this edition of And the Plot Thickens, parts of part of the Authors on the Air Global Network. I'm your host, Jeff Crawford. Helping me with the technical aspects of this show are Carrie Schaefer, Kim Carpenter, and Karen Biggerstaff Patterson. This is a show where we are going to talk to authors of various genres and people associated closely with with writing about the different ways that tension and suspense can be created in a book for the reader. Today's guest is not only one of the most unique writers working today, he's also one of the most talented. Predominantly a horror writer, Greg approaches his writing differently and and writes characters and dialogue that are not only relatable but natural. His lighter, fast-paced, witty style is easy as well as fun to immerse yourself in. Please welcome from the Crystal Coast line, Mr. Greg Stumbo. Thank you, Jeff. Hi guys, uh, those are some really kind words, man. That's <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, how could I not be with the Jeff Crawford? <laughs> <laughs> you, you really are one of the most prolific uh, writers that 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 I've had the, the pleasure to meet, let alone work with. So I'm 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 honored. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. You're already on the show. You can lay off of the flattery. <laughs> um, let's jump right into this. What, what we're going to talk about is a fairly complex topic with a short amount of time to cover some of it. So uh, we're, we're, going to, we're going to get into it and get busy. Tension and or suspense in almost any book is almost always necessary in some form or another at some point. How do you personally approach those parts of your books so that the reader sits up a little straighter and grips the book a little bit tighter as they read your words? Uh, Well, the first thing that I do is ignore the the tactical world around them or tactile world world around them. It's um, I don't try and do it so much through, you know, direct influence as I do with what's going on in the characters' heads. Um, because uh, we've all seen people in similar situations and seen how one person completely freaks out and another person just blows right through it like it's nothing. And, you know, it's, it's the people who freak out in those situations that actually creates the tension and the drama and, you know, whether or not they can, they can handle the situation. And, you know, so, you know, if, if you're with the crocodile hunter, and you run across, you know, a black mamba, you know, you're going to be fine because he's just going to reach down and pick it up, you know. But if you're with a bunch of 12-year-olds, everybody's going to be freaking out. <laughs> so, um, and that's that's what I, I try to do. I make sure that the right character's in the right situation for that tension to, to come out from the character more so than the actual situation. Well, that's interesting. So you, you, you let, you build your suspense off. It's character driven. Yes. Okay. Well, see that, that's, that leads into the next thing I was going to ask about. And it was what creates the tension or discomfort or suspense the best for you inside the book. Um, sometimes, you know, depending on who it is or or the type of book it is, it's either the setting or the presentation of facts or the environment around the entire book or the vagueness of what you don't tell. You know, it, it's the it's the edges. But you're saying it's character. Now, do these other things apply? Do they factor into the, so it's it's a it's an exponential effect. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to have a thing happen and it, you know, it can't just be a a normal thing that a normal person will run into. I mean, you know, I don't write 
superheroes. I don't write highly trained operatives. You know, I, I try to write normal people. Um, and you put normal people in abnormal situations. So, you know, um, so for the, for the Generation Z series, you know, you, you've got zombies everywhere. You know, and, and yeah, everybody's laughing as, as, as it's going along, but the danger is real. You know, people are getting bitten, people are getting killed. Um, and that's one thing to have as a general environment. It's another thing when it starts hitting close to home and starts impacting the actual characters that you're following. So, you know, you can talk about, you know, zombies and, and dead bodies all day long, but the, I don't think the reader's going to care so much about that if they're not relating to, you know, through a character. So, um, so, I mean, yeah, you do have to have everything on the, on the outer world. And, and you, as you learned with us working together, um, you brought up the, the stuff that's not mentioned, the stuff that's on the peripheral. And um, there, I, I leave a lot to the imagination for exactly that reason, because the vagueness, the, the not having answers, um, that freaks people out too. <laughs> Do you think it's scarier to not know than scarier than anything you could write? Oh, definitely. Definitely. The fear of the unknown is, is one of the biggest driving fears, uh, followed by the fear of loss. So, you know, you, you take those two things, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's happening. You're already going to be scared. And then if you're afraid of losing somebody close to you or, you know, losing your safe place, it, it's just, it's going to jump up to that next level. Here's a here's a question that I didn't I didn't have written down in my notes here, but it but you made me think about it with what you said. Do you outline? No, not at all, not at all. Um, I would get extremely bored if if I outlined everything and knew what was coming. So if your suspense is character driven, you don't know who's going to be the driving forces in your book until they prove themselves to you. Correct. Yeah. How, 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 at the same time the reader does in, in, in the book. So it's, um, you know, which helps cause I've, you know, I've, I've got a pace that I'm comfortable with in, in my writing that, that kind of drives the story and the timing. So, you know, uh, as I've gone through enough descriptors of, of whatever I need to, it's time for something to happen. And, you know, that, that just clicks in automatically and it's like, okay, what's happening now? And, you know, the next thing, you know, um, you know, a door closes and cuts somebody's hand off or, or something, you know? <laughs> right. Do you see the end of the book before you start it? Sometimes, usually not. Uh, but sometimes, um, and sometimes like with crossover, the ending that I was writing towards turned out to not be the, they, that never showed up in the book because the way the, the story shifted and turned, it presented a completely different ending that was even better than the one that was originally planned. Okay. The, the reason I asked is if you know what the last page two pages, last chapter, whatever that's going to be. You know how it's going to funnel down and where it's going to stop. Does that make it... Does that make it easier or harder as far as being engaged? If you're trying to write a book that's suspenseful, if you already know what's going to happen at the end. You, not the reader. Yeah, no, um, it really didn't impact me all that much. Uh, uh, Gen Z4, uh, Dead for Life, I knew what the ending for that one was going to be. Um, I knew it before I even started the book. So, you know, I knew I was writing towards that ending. And uh, the thing was, I knew I had an entire book to get to that point. So I wasn't... I wasn't thrown off by it. It didn't slow me down. It didn't hold me back. It, it, you know, in that particular book, it actually drove me on because it's, it's like, you know, I really like this ending really, you know, this is definitely how this book is going to end. And it's a, one of the, one of the best endings I, I feel I've written to date. And, um, and I just cruised right to it. So, you know, that was a good driving force. 
but with um, you know, but with other books, uh, the ending can be what the ending is, and and that's okay. So, why suspense? I mean, I I, I, I say suspense. I know the Z stuff is classified as horror, but it's all got an element there. Why? What drew you to suspense? Why is it is it a knack for being a writer, or just that you enjoy it and you want to be a part of it? Yeah, it's. Um, I want what I write to be entertaining, and entertainment comes in a lot of different forms. And uh, I'm personally not at all entertained by flowers and rainbows and unicorns and long walks on the beach holding hands. That's that's not entertainment for me. You know, it'd be nice to live that way. But, you know, when, you know, if I sit down to watch a movie, you know, I want to see, you know, explosions and running and car chases and, you know, so, you know, I got to be entertained while I'm writing, if I'm going to entertain people while they're reading and, and that suspense has to be there. You know, if, if everything's running smooth and fun, then there's, there's no fun to the story. You know, it doesn't get your heart rate up. And I, you know, I like people to get in their heads, get their heart rate up and, you know, walk away, you know, not immediately closing the book and thinking about it. I want them to, you know, think about it two or three days later and go, wait a minute, is that me? Am I doing that thing over there? You know, I, I kind of want it to go that way. So suspense is a very good way to do it. Okay. Um, we've touched on this just a little bit, but Greg, but even though by and large, you as a writer know to a certain extent what's coming on the next page, the next chapter, even if you don't outline, you have an idea of what's down the road. Right. Yep. Do you feel the tension building as you write the book the same way that the reader feels it as they're reading it? Um, I hope so. Um, I, I feel what I write. Um, it's, it's very emotionally driven. So, um, you know, if, if I'm sitting up on the edge of my seat, you see pounding on the, on the, on the keyboard, you know, I have a pretty good idea that I'm translating things appropriately because I'm in the right mindset. I'm not, I'm not sitting back comfortably and relaxed trying to choose the right words to convey an emotion. I'm, I'm running through that emotion, you know, whether, whether I'm scared or I'm happy or excited or, or, um, you know, upset. And, and that really helps me to, to drive the, the, the characters through the situation. So it's, yeah, it's, it's more emotionally driven. Okay. Um, we're, we're closing in on our time limit, but tell us what you have going on and what's coming up for you as, as well. Uh, and tell us where the reader can find you and your books. I know you've published at least five novels as uh, well as co-authored a book. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you, you tell us what other irons are in the fire and what you've got coming up and where they can all, uh, line up to meet you all right all right um so uh first and foremost uh grab your pens uh so you can hunt me down on twitter and that's at gen z book on twitter uh, if you want to find me on instagram or facebook you can just type my name greg stumbo search for me that way um it should be pretty apparent and if it's not you probably got the wrong guy um <laughs> If you just flat out Google my name, you're going to probably get the Attorney General of Kentucky. Um, he's an older gentleman. Uh, he's in politics. I am not in politics. So just scroll on to the next page or add books after the name and I'll pop right up. The books are all on Amazon. Uh, you can go through the Raventail website. Um, those are the those are the primaries. You can also find me on Instagram. Um, but for the love of me, I cannot figure out how to make Instagram work. So if any of my, you know, 15, 1600 followers out there on Instagram can give me a couple of lessons. That would be awesome. Um, I haven't done a website yet, but those are the, those are the primary ways to get a hold of me. Um, I'm working on the fifth book in the Generation Z series. Um, so the first four are out, first three in paperback, fourth one paperback should drop here. I don't, I don't want to put them under pressure, but it'll be coming soon. Um, and that's a fun zombie comedy series. So if you want to laugh and be scared at the same time, that's that's for you. Uh, Crossover has recently come out. That's an ebook paperback coming soon. Uh, that's an Alice in Wonderland sci-fi horror 
type thing. It's it's like a space odyssey meets Alice in Wonderland, and it, it's it's already been called awesomely gruesome. So um, enjoy that. And uh, I've got one other book that I'm that I'm working on, and uh, I think the best way I can put it is it's kind of a haunted house with a big twist. So. Um, 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 partway through that and it's, it's moving along nicely. So, uh, hopefully by the end of the summer, that one will be coming out, but, uh, we'll see. Summers are pretty busy for me. So. Well, that was a pretty suspenseful cliffhanger. You just left us on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, I, I, I am, I have, uh, said it before and I'll say it right now. I am blown away with the idea of crossover. I mean, I, I really am. That's that may be as an imaginative of an idea as I've ever heard. Um, I've I've got it on my TBR, and I know two other people that are that this next in line on them. As soon as they put down the book, they're on crossover. Is the one they're picking up. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I can't I can't wait to uh, write a review on that one, even if it's just to you. But uh, uh, I, I I can't wait to read that book. Well, you know what? If we sell enough, there's a there's an opportunity for a sequel too. So, well, hey, there you go. Um, I, I got enough irons in the fire. I figure I'll wait and see how it how it does on the market. So if they, if if people pick it up and love it, then then I'm gonna feel obligated to get the sequel out. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. You've been listening to a conversation with the fun and talented writer Greg Stumbo. It's been my pleasure to bring him and his thoughts to you today. I truly hope. He will agree to come back and visit again. Oh, definitely. Great, great. Thank you, Greg. I'm Jeff Crawford, and this has been And the Plot Thickens. We are proudly part of Authors on the Air Global Network. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, and at www.authorjeffcrawford.com. Hoping I'll see you right back here next time, which is generally every other Wednesday. Until then, enjoy a good book. Let the author know you've read it. And thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode. Each and, every, each and every one of you are appreciated. Greg, have a great day and thanks so much for being on. All right, we'll talk to you soon.